Saturday is always that way. Let's run down what we have for you today on CTV. The women's free skate to come live later in the show. We'll have highlights of the women's short program in just a few moments. And then later tonight, be with us on CTV, Elvis Stoiko and the rest of the men in the men's free skate. There is Elvis on the ice right now below me, just going through the final paces of his workout in the afternoon, the early afternoon in Red Deer. He'll be back on ice tonight. He's the leader after the short program, and of course, he is the world champion. Our Skate Canada coverage will finish off tomorrow with the finale, the ice dance competition. Shaylin Bourne and Victor Kratz, the Canadian champions, are the leaders after the compulsory dances. Now let's go back to last night before we get to today. Canada already has one win at this competition. It came in the pairs competition. Christy Sargent and Chris Wirtz, the heirs apparent to Lloyd Eisler and Isabel Brasseur, with their first international win last night in the pairs competition. And then at the medal ceremony afterwards, the silver medalist, Elena Berezhnea, on the podium by herself. Her partner, Oleg Shliakov, decided not to show up Chris Wirtz, in a classy gesture, brought her onto the ice and then later helped her onto the podium. Classy gesture from Chris, not so classy, by Berezhnea's partner, Shliakov, who didn't show up for the medal ceremony last night. Lots coming today. We'll also examine and explore the state of skating right now, how it was in the old days, and how it will look in the future. That's to come. Women's short program in a few moments. Let's go down now to our commentators, our champions, Debbie Wilkes and Brian Orser. Well, in the women's event, the marquee names may not be here, but we have some skaters with a lot of great international exposure. Letitia Hubert from France, Christina Jaco from Hungary, and Germany's Marina Kielman, who is ranked number three in the world right now. She had a horrible short program, and she's very eager to improve on that placing with her free program. Now here's the story with Canada. Susan Humphreys was to be here. She's injured, which is a shame because she's living just up the road in Edmonton, but we'll see her in January at the Canadian Championships in Halifax. She'll be healthy and she'll be there with the new coaching team. In her absence, we've been able to send two of Canada's rising stars, Angela DeRoche from Ottawa and Jennifer Robinson from Windsor. Well, Brian, old face or new, these women will all be looking in the short program to complete the eight required elements in under two minutes and 40 seconds. You'll see three jumps, three spins, two footwork sections, one of which is a spiral sequence. The most important thing in the short program, for the women at least, is that for the first time in history, they will be allowed to attempt a triple jump as the solo jump in their program. The interesting thing, I think more interesting in fact, is that the ISU has restructured the marking of the short program so that the jump combination is not as important as it once was, thereby giving a, a more well-balanced program since each of the elements will be worth an equal amount. All of that in an effort to try to get the skaters to pay a little more attention perhaps to choreography and also so we can see a more well-balanced program. Only 20 years old, but Leticia Hubert has quite a portfolio. Former world junior champion, fourth at the world championships in 1992, 17th in Lillehammer from Versailles, France. She's a skater that most other skaters want to stay away from on the ice. She has a history of injury, not only to herself, but by crashing into other skaters. In fact, last night during practice, she hit the boards, banged her knee, really injured herself quite badly, although nothing more than pain. Uh, spent a little time in the hospital. The other skaters are terrified of practicing with her on the ice. Her first element, triple loop, double toe. Very nice, and she's been having problems with that. She is either on or off tonight. She appears to be on.
spiral sequence, another required element for the short program. This year, new rule for the women's short program, they have the option of doing a triple or double jump individually out of steps. She has chosen a triple toe loop. Here it is. And there should be a small deduction for that, for putting her foot down after she's landed the jump. Letitia Hubert of France. She won the World Junior Championship in Canada in 1991 in Hull, Quebec. This is the combination jump, the, the, the triple loop into the double toe. She just took that great speed right into the jump. She had great distance and a nice double toe loop, but still awfully close to those boards. I know, she seems to put, even in the long program, you'll see that in here as well with the triple toe loop. Getting very close into the end, seemed to go up nicely. The free leg, however, got crossed too far over. She couldn't follow through to hold the landing. The marks for the required elements. And the second set for presentation, Letitia Hubert of France and her short program. And now another one-minute interview with Michelle Strong. No, 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 she's just working on the ankle. Of Angie DeRoshi is here. Are you ready for this? One minute. D when did you start skating? I was 10 years old. Now, why did you start skating? Because I tried a lot of different sports, and my mom used to like skating, so then I decided to try it, and I just started liking it. Did you have any heroes when you were young? Uh, I liked Midori Ido. Tell me about your first pair of skates. Um, I'd have to say that they were the kind that you buy at Canadian Tire. <laughs> a little commercial there. <laughs> Do you get dizzy when you spin? No. Well, sometimes when you get in the new rink and there's a lot of bright lights, you kind of forget which direction you're coming out. But after a while, you get used to it again. Do you have a favorite skating moment? Like the, the, the best moment you've ever had on ice? Yeah, I'd have to say it was when they won Junior Canadians. <laughs> Angela DeRoshi. A very special night for Angela DeRoshi. Her 21st birthday, her first Sun Life Skate Canada International competition. She was just brought in, too, not that long ago after Susan Humphreys had to withdraw due to injury. She's come from Skate America, looking to improve upon her performance there. She's getting every birthday gift a girl could ask for. First two triples in the program, nicely done.
next element. It's the double axle, but watch how she enters. From a back inside three, and up she goes. Only a single. That'll be about a point three deduction. That's a major deduction for leaving out one revolution on a jump. Angie DeRoshi. Former Canadian junior champion. She had it all going right up until that double axle. Brian, you spoke yesterday about how sometimes you take the double axle for granted. This is the triple sow cow. She had, it, was it was just right on, actually. Nice tight, nice tight position in the air, right into the double toe loop. Yeah, just perfect. Everything was perfect. But then, in taking the double axle for granted, I think her best element lost it. Lost her concentration for just a second. You never know when the body Marks for opens up Angela like that. Why? Why? For There's her coach, elements. Peter Dunfield. Debbie, he's Bonnelly. had many a young protege. Elizabeth Manley, mm -hmm. the current world champion, Yuka Sato from Japan. He told us that she has an excellent opportunity, though, if she puts her mind to it right now because of the retirement of Jose Schwenard, although Jose is also thinking perhaps of coming back as an eligible skater someday. With all the retirements, she is ranked <coughs> quite high in Canada at this moment. Here's a skater. Angie has, has been skating for years with a chronic ankle injury, and she says it's only in the last month that she's feeling like her foot is really hers again. The deductions hurt her on the required elements. Her marks for a presentation are better. But the double axle, so costly on her 21st birthday. That was last night. Angela DeRoshi finished fourth in the short program with the women's free skate still to come today. Letitia Hubert is the leader. Christina Zacco is second. The American, Jesse Mills, third. And Alma Lapina, who also got two first place ordinals, is in fifth position. Amanda Farkas, the Canadian Jennifer Robinson. You'll see her today. Marina Kielman, a surprising eighth. Natalie Krieg of Switzerland in ninth position, one of the best spinners in the world. Beautiful day in Red Deer, Alberta. Sky blue, sunshine inside, some great skating. When we come back, we examine the state of the game in 94. The images on the horizon of the figure skating world seem hazy. The sport is seeking focus, struggling for new definition, a maturing process that everyone hopes will bring clarity to the mix. The stars of today are facing the same identity crisis as stars from other eras, and there is concern for the direction of this sport. You know, at the grassroots level, I think it's great. At our level, um, it's dangerous because, um, you know, skating's so exciting right now, you know, I, I'm worried that we're going to take too much. So we have to take care of what's treating us so great, which is figure skating, and nurture it and make sure it stays alive for, you know, many decades to come. It's a time for kids whose families sacrificed enormously, 25 to 30,000 a year in uh, after-tax income to support a skating career. And when the chance to skate for money comes along, who can blame them for jumping into it? Well, I think it is getting too big, and somebody's gonna have to pull in their horns. The fact is, however, that you've got agents running to promoters and as long as you've got those agents running to promoters, the promoters are going to give it a try. And what happens with that is that you get so many. We haven't reached that point yet, but we're not far away. I think the real winner is the, the figure skating fan. To keep all of these kids in and skating at the level that they're skating at, that never happened before. Back in the 80s, uh, early 80s, I mean, they just went to ice capades and you really never saw them again until they rolled through your town. Now you can see them every weekend and skating at, at a very high level. So I think that's the future. These kids will be in the sport a lot longer than they were before. It's big business now. 
And um, I'm, is that I'm, good? I guess it is good because skaters, so many skaters that were great but didn't have enough money to fund their own sp skating, never got a chance. We all are very concerned. It, it, it just is happening so quickly. And uh, every day brings something new. So I, uh, I know we're going to have a council meeting in Budapest at Junior Worlds, and uh, certainly it's going to be one of the top items up for discussion. It'll have to do exactly as it always has, one step at a time, and the new kids are going to have to be able, we have to have confidence they can grow up. And yes, we can keep moving. I mean, and the bubble doesn't have to burst kind of thing. And if, it just, if we go through a cycle where it appears down sometimes, so what? It's all part of a cycle. There's no arrow that's just pointed in a straight line. No matter what you follow in history, there's always a graph, and things have to breathe before they go again. Doug Lee, coach of Elvis Stoiko, men's free skate to come later tonight, women's free skate in just a few moments here on CTV. But let's talk a little bit about the state of skating right now. And joining us is the Director General of the Canadian Figure Skating Association. There may be some people out there who are saying, what are they talking about? I see Kurt Browning skate so well. I see Elvis Stoiko. Skating's enjoying a wonderful time. Is it? It is, um, and it isn't. I think this is really no different than what a lot of sports before us have gone through. Maybe hockey, uh, maybe in the tennis, um, to a lesser extent in golf. I think it's when the world of the amateur skater or the developing skater meets the world of the performer and the moneyed uh, agent skater. And somewhere in between is where we are now, I think. And uh, a lot of the comments that I made, I think the first comment this one made is it is good for the sport in many ways it's lifting the consciousness of the sport the popularity of the sport and certainly in the Lillehammer games even though it was the first time that people came back so-called professionals came back to the sport it certainly increased the level of, of, of performance very much so a lot of things are happening I think the most difficult thing that I'm finding I have to explain to people is people are saying so how have you changed us being the Canadian Figure Skating Association and I have a really simple answer now we haven't changed. We're exactly, we're exactly what we were. But everything around us is changing. And what we're all trying to do is put this whole thing into perspective and see how each part fits into its niche. Because I think it's ultimately going to be quite seamless. We're going to develop the skaters as we always have. We're going to improve their performance and their experiences. We're going to allow them to win titles. And then they're going to move on. And they're going to do performing for entertainment. And so I think we should see it, that we're all working together but at the present moment, we're all struggling to try to find how. Let's bring in Debbie Wilkes and Brian Orser, who are ice level. They, I'm sure, have a comment for you. Debbie? Well, David, my question to you is, why, why are you getting the feeling within the association that there is some kind of threat here from the professionals, threat in regard to the development of skating in Canada, or perhaps how we're going to see competitions like Skate Canada? Well, I, I think the answer to that is, is that, that people in this competition in the Sun Life Skate Canada are really running under a very strict sense of rules. Um, th there is no leverage here for them to uh, put in something new or something different like a backflip and so forth. It's very, very rigid, but that, that's the way it is when you're developing people and you're moving them forward to a world championship. And, and I think people are asking us, are you going to change? Uh, basically, no. And I think what you're seeing here this weekend is something different. Uh, this is what we've always been doing. We've been developing and creating skaters, and we're going to continue to do that. Brian? Well, I think uh, Mr. Doerr hit the nail on the head with the development of skating um, comes through the grassroots level of the Canadian Figure Skating Association. And to put it really simple, simply, the, the CFSA is really the goose that lays the golden egg. And, uh, and, and that's where we're all coming from. And that's where we start, and that's where we go through. And uh, there's a point where we have to be handed over to, to other entities. I'd like to say that I like being called Mr. Door by Brian Orser. Because <laughs> I remember when, but I think Brian's right. You know, like, I like to look at Brian, and Brian was once a member of the CFSA, and he was Skate Canada champion, and he, he in, uh, in 1981, and then again, he fought uh, uh, in 1988, just before the uh, Calgary Olympics. It played a part in the development of him, and it will play a part in the development of the future stars. I wonder how the spectator, the fan out there, reacts to all of this that is going on and how much of a say they have. Because you look at sports, like you say, like baseball and hockey, and you looked at how they developed into these professional ranks and these professional leagues. Unfortunately, they're not playing right now. 
But at the same time, the fan out there started to follow professional baseball, professional hockey, and lost in the middle with the amateurs. Uh, how do you counteract that feeling that could come? Again, I, I don't, I don't want to be on the defensive. I'm not going to be on the defensive because I think we will counteract it because I think everyone who is here this weekend is enjoying what they're seeing. They're coming to the practice and they're saying, this is really exciting. I'm seeing some real young people who have an opportunity to win some prize money that's going to help them with their skating, prize money that they're putting, I might add, into a trust fund. It, it's not just going into their pocket, but they, they're going to improve their, their level of performance and they're going to go forward. We have to think about the athletes. And I think, yes, and I think also next week we'll turn on the television and we'll, we'll see another skating program that will be pure, unadulterated entertainment. And that's good. So maybe everyone's right. This is a win-win situation. Debbie, one final question from you. Oh, yeah, well, I have the big one, of course, the big one in my mind, and that is, David, as I look at these events that are, are coming out with prize monies that are like winning the lottery for the professionals, I have to look at them and, and think that perhaps, in my mind at least, they are big TV events staged for Hollywood. And here we have at Skate Canada and other competitions like this what for me is really the true meaning of the sport of figure skating. Those other things may be competition, but in my mind they could just as equally be exhibitions. That's, that's quite correct, and I, I think that we're going to have to appeal to our sponsors and appeal to the people that support us that certainly we are going to have to offer a little bit better prize money, hopefully, um, to attract better skaters because there are, as uh, Brian has stated, there are other opportunities and Curtis skate, other opportunities for, for skaters to make money and to earn money on a very short-term, quick basis. And so therefore, yeah, we're going to, but I think still there's going to be skaters that are going to come here because it's another part of their development. Well, David, thanks for your comments today. Uh, all the best with the Canadian Figure Skating Association, and congratulations on a, another terrific week here in Red Deer, Alberta. Thank you very much. David Dorr, the Director General of the Canadian Figure Skating Association. And still to come, there is one of the rising young skaters in Canada, Jennifer Robinson. She's still to come. The women's free skate ahead at the Sun Life Skate Canada International. Back in 1980, Canada was in the middle of a long metal drought. It lasted six years, and the future was not very encouraging. Fortunately, along came a little pixie named Tracy Wayne. She was the novice champion in 1979. And then, in 1980, she jumped all the way to a senior silver medal at Skate Canada here in Calgary. She jumped right into seniors with a good command of figures, short and long programs. Tracy finished third in the 1980 Canadian seniors, but the skating world was talking about putting a 14-year minimum on world competitors. So the CFSA decided to send 12-year-old Tracy to the Worlds in Dortmund, Germany, and this would guarantee her eligibility in 1981, when she would be a much better prepared skater at the age of 13. Tracy was the talk of Canada and of the world, and she took her minds off medals. She finished 14th, but was in the top 10 in the free skate. In 1981, Tracy at 13, won Skate Canada and was the youngest Canadian champion. To add to the excitement, she was named the Female Athlete of the Year. In 1981, by winning Canadians, she justified the CFSA's decision. 1981 continued to be a big year and Tracy finished 10th at the Worlds in Hartford. As Tracy sprouted into womanhood during the next three years, she paid the price of being pushed too far too early. Because of injuries and parental problems, she disappeared from sight until a comeback urge and she brought out the skates again. In 1985, Elizabeth Manley, the Canadian champion, who was to achieve even greater success later, at this point was vulnerable. And Tracy's comeback was justified with her upset win over Manley in 1986. The growth from a cute little tyke who could skate to a full-grown teenager, Tracy had reached her peak. She married Joseph Sabovchik, who was a world-class skater. And so ends the story of a young Canadian who, at the age of 13, was the female athlete of the year in Canada. And then, before the age of 20, slid silently into the sunset. And back.
back live in Red Deer, Alberta. Jennifer Robinson and the rest of the first flight getting ready. In a few moments, we will show you the women's free skate. You'll see all the competitors this afternoon at the 94 Sun Life Skate Canada International from the Centrium in Red Deer, Alberta.